All right, guys, no, we're here live now. Here we go. Our, our first guest of the night, our only guest of the night, you know him as the TNA X Division champion. You know him as an ECW legend, a former WWE champion. He is our friend, Rob Van Dam. How are you doing today, buddy? Everything's great, man. Um, back in my old stopping grounds this weekend. Feels good. Yeah, listen, man, I'm in Philly, too, and I'm an ECW. I went to ECW shows as a kid. I loved watching the ECW shows. ECW was one of the biggest parts of what Philly was as a wrestling community. How does it feel to be back in the old slime grounds, like you said, back in Philly, doing the wrestling thing in, in, in the old area? Yeah, I mean, it feels uh, it feels really good. You know, I was just uh, telling my friend, when I walk around Philly, when I'm spotted at the diners or uh, drugstore or whatever, People assume that I live here because uh, I've been here so much and because I'm uh, such a big part of a lot of people's lives. You know what I mean? I see people all the time, uh, uh, even people older than me, tell me they grew up watching me. So I'm used to, I'm used to uh, being pretty impacted on, the, on their lives, and that's great, man. This is Philly. This is where everybody wants to wrestle. Yeah, and also, well, talk talk about the show in Philadelphia. You got a TNA show in Philadelphia Saturday at the Tower Theater. It, it's actually a normal theater for for plays and such. I don't know how TNA is going to put on a wrestling show now. Have you been inside the facility? And what do you expect from a, a, a match inside Philadelphia again? Uh, I don't know that I've been to this particular venue. I know that I have been in Philly uh, at a few random different venues over the last uh, few years, of course. Uh, you know, we did the uh, uh, the ECW arena back in the day, and then, of course, when I was with WWE, we did the uh, the bigger uh, stadium. What was it named after the bank? Not Wachovia. First Union? No. First, um, uh, I think whatever it's Wells name. Fargo now. Yeah, okay. So so there's that. And uh, I've been here with TNA. We did something. I think it was um, on the college or something. Yeah, the Center. Yeah. So yeah. this might be... This, this might be our first time, you know. It, it's that's the thing about wrestling, though, is you get uh, you get you're you're in demand all over the place. There's not a town anywhere in the country where they wouldn't like to see wrestling. So when they can when they can book it and coordinate it and make it happen, the fans will come out. I've wrestled in I've wrestled in barns. I've wrestled outside in a lot of uh, ballparks, and uh, I don't know what the uh, Tower Theater is like, but I'm sure it's been checked out, and I'm sure they sure that they feel it's uh, it's up to standards and i don't know how many people it will hold but we're going to try to pack it oh yeah it is a very small venue and, and you know what the, the, the thing about it is it's very intimate and that's one thing that ecw brought to the fans you felt like you were what you weren't so you weren't secluded away from the stars you were part of the action and that's what the tower theater is like what, what do you feel the advantages of a small venue are to the bigger places like the wells fargo center to, as compared to ecw arena and stuff well you said it right there when you, you said the, the intimacy, that connection that we have with the fans is, uh, it's, uh, it's something that's like irreplaceable. Um, like you said, back in the ECW days, you know, the, the fans were part of the show. They were a big part of the show. And, uh, it was our, our connection and, uh, relating to them, uh, and, and them relating to us. It was that interaction, uh, that, that made the whole show. So, Spent some years in the. Oh, are you still there? I'm sorry, someone's calling on the other line. Yep. Hello. Okay, you're still there. Yeah, I'm here. Go anyway, ahead. yes. Sorry, dude. The phone's making some weird noises. So, uh, you know, now with total nonstop action, it seems that uh, we're definitely uh, back in that same that same circumstance where it's. Uh, Sorry, the phone. It, it's very intimate. We we do uh, meet and greet uh, where we meet all the fans. You know, they, that's something that the bigger groups uh, never did. But everybody that comes to the show gets a chance to talk to their favorite wrestlers, to meet them, get their autograph, get a picture. Uh, and that, you know, even during the matches, uh, as you mentioned, if it's a uh, – uh, if the atmosphere calls for it, you know, I mean, you don't have to – it's not like screaming at your TV because – the wrestlers will hear you, and especially if it's in a, a tighter venue like you're talking about. Uh, we're, we're connected to the fans the entire time, and therefore they're connected to us as well. Mike, you have a question? 
Oh, uh, yeah, Rob, uh, you've been a main event guy for much of your career, obviously, uh, ECW, WWE, TNA. Uh, but right now in TNA, you're currently the X Division champion, and you've been mixing it up with some of the younger guys, uh, specifically uh, Kenny King and Christian York uh, of late. Uh, I was wondering, do you enjoy facing this up-and-coming talent, or do you maybe sometimes find yourself wishing you were contending for the world title instead of that? Well, I'm having fun as the X Division champion right now. Um, I do find myself wrestling a lot of the uh, younger, newer guys, guys that I haven't been wrestling all over the world for many years. So uh, I do notice a, a big difference in the in the chemistry, but I accept my position. You know, these guys modeled themselves after me. They they watched me stand out, and they wanted to stand out that way. So that's what the whole exhibition is about. And once I had someone else explain that to me besides just me, Assuming that's what it was, I really kind of took more. Uh, I felt more obligated to uh, to take control. You know, I mean, if that, if these people understand it the way I do, by these people, I mean, you know, TNA, if, they, if they're looking at it like this whole X division, you know, we owe it to the RVD and his uh, and his originality. Well, then I, I feel, uh, you know, like it's my duty to to make it what I can. So I've been having a lot of fun stepping it up, trying to uh, trying to make those matches more exciting. You know, I've said, I've said my my whole career, uh, I'm happier uh, when I'm in the hardcore environment. You know, I'm out there to show off. I got a lot more to show, and uh, throw the rule book out and, and give me the whole arena, give me all the furniture, and the toughest guy ends up winning at the end of those matches, which that's uh, that's a big advantage for me. So going for the heavyweight strap, you know, that that's that's cool. Uh, if it, if it does, uh, if it comes to that, you know, then I will, uh, I'll accept my position in that as well. But right now, I'm kind of feeling like I can make the sex division mean a lot more than it meant before RVD won the title, and that's very important to me. Brandon Galvin, question? Yeah, yeah Rob, right now you're one of the uh, the veterans in the locker room for TNA. How does that differ, uh, TNA's atmosphere and overall, differ from where you were in WWE and ECW when you were coming up? Uh, I would assume it's a good thing for for TNA. I mean, they have a good balance of uh, young, uh, up and coming guys, and also some established veterans that um, are, are well known and that are able to uh, draw a crowd off of their their legacy. You know, and you got to have a balance of that. Uh, I am one of the guys that uh, that can tell people more how it needs to be done rather than have someone explain to me how it needs to be done. So that's a big advantage for me. I'm I'm really enjoying this time in my career. I feel like I'm treated like I've paid my dues, uh, and 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 that's really good. Uh, that's that's something that, as you mentioned, with WWE, seems like you, you never really get credit. You're always paying your dues, always, unless you work your way up through the office into being CEO, which a lot of the guys – seem to want to do. It's a lot more corporate. It's a lot more politically structured there. And for here, like I said, I'm just out there to show off. So uh, I'm enjoying going out there. And uh, because of my, because of my years that I put into the business, that does uh, allow me to have a freedom to go out there and express myself without being held back uh, by all the political chains that will that'll weigh you down so much. So uh, I think it's good. For, for TNA, I mean, obviously when I'm wrestling these young guys, uh, uh, they're probably hoping to get a rub off of me. I'm probably teaching them something. I certainly hope so. If they're not learning anything, uh, then they got no potential whatsoever because we're all learning something every day. I agree. Mike Kayo, question? Yeah, thanks. Uh, hey, Rob, uh, you know, I noticed that you know you've been in the business such a long time, and obviously you've you've gotten a chance, especially within TNA, to wrestle a, a different variety of guys. How much input do you have over you know what kind of direction your your character goes, and you know who you get to wrestle, and how much input do you really want to have at this point in your career? Or are you just sort of happy to be a part of the process overall? I think that um, my Say so is uh, probably determined by uh, a lot by my desire or not desire to say so. So, in other words, as talent, uh, I don't make the decisions of who I'm wrestling, of, uh, of what direction I'm going to. 
go in of, uh, you know, what storylines are coming up. I have no say-so in any of that. I feel like if I really wanted to take part in that, uh, maybe, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure I could talk to the uh, promoters more. Maybe I could even sit in on, the, uh, on some meetings or something if I wanted to do that. I've never wanted to be in a wrestling office. I doubt that you'll ever see me in that position. Uh, I never want to be in charge of other people's lives and, 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 and me determine how much food they get to put on the table for their families and stuff. I've always thought that, uh, that that's a job that uh, I, I never envied. And, and I like just being talent. So basically uh, they make it, they make it as easy and as comfortable for me uh, pretty much as they can. So they give me, uh, they tell me who I'm going to wrestle and then uh, I can, you know, pretty much take it from there. And I think they know me. Too. They go out of their way to to learn uh, the wrestlers, to learn about them, about their their preferences, their habits, their what they do throughout the day. Uh, and they know that. So so most of uh, what they what they ask for me doesn't uh, doesn't conflict with any of that. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm there. I'm there if they need me. If you need me to go down and. Uh, do a photo shoot. Uh, you need me to do some interviews uh, uh, for some uh, markets uh, coming up, some TV shows. You need me to need me to do a promo for the pay per view for uh, Germany. Uh, I'm there for that. But as far as uh, sitting in and deciding, you know, oh, this is what this is what we should do with this guy. This is what we should do with me. No, I don't want any part of it. <laughs> 